Hello and welcome to Ireland, welcome to Dublin and welcome back to Pulse College for today's online programme for the Scoring for Film and Visual Media Masters programme. First up, three exclusive opportunities for people who apply early. Opportunity one, applications are now open. If you apply early, are accepted and deposit before December 31st, 2016, you will receive one month free at the Hollywood Composers Residency in Los Angeles after graduation. Opportunity two, Early applicants have exclusive access to the Christopher Young Scholarship, which will be awarded to one student who has been accepted and deposited before December 31st, 2016. Opportunity three. All accepted applicants who apply and deposit by December 31st, 2016 will have the opportunity to meet Conrad Pope at a live online event to talk about orchestration prior to coming onto the programme, as well as all the events that we run in preparing for Pulse series. For full details, please visit our website, pulsecollege.eu or contact us via email pulse at pulsecollege.eu and now Derek Gleeson. Hi my name is Derek Gleeson I'm the course director on the MA in scoring for film and visual media program at Pulse College here in Wimmer Lane Dublin. Wimmer Lane Recording Studios is unique insofar as that the participants on this master's course will be embedded in an environment which recorded music for such amazing scores as The Field, My Left Foot, Mission Impossible, The Mask, and games like Diablo 3. The MA is a one-year program. The first two semesters are taught semesters, and the third semester is a master's thesis. It's very important that the students develop a portfolio whilst they're here. So we have a number of recording sessions with smaller ensembles growing to a large ensemble of 110-piece symphony orchestra, which actually happens in Sofia, Bulgaria. You can find great examples of our students' compositions on the Pulse College website. Just go there and follow the links. Derek Gleeson there talking about the one year scoring for film and visual media program. And now, Christopher Young to see everyone. Oh, lovely, yeah. Hey. Are you short here? Hey. <laughs> Hollywood poet, composer Christopher Young, visiting tutor and a long term friend of the Masters program. Yes, indeed. Christopher is also the owner and the founder of the Tilden House in Los Angeles, a low cost residency helping musicians from all over around the world take the first career steps in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And actually where some of our students are, are going have been recently, Samantha being one of them. Chris's films you may know, such as Hellraiser, Swordfish, The Shipping News. That's a beautiful cue. That's a beautiful thank score. Spider-Man 3, Killing Season, Ghost Rider. I love that. We talked about that yesterday. Great yes, score. Yes, we did. We did. The Rum Diary with uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Johnny, Love Johnny, Johnny you know. Yeah, Johnny. Depp, yeah. Johnny. Uh, Love yeah. Happens, The Core, Entrapment. That was with Sean Connery, wasn't it? Entrapment was a Sean and Connery. Sean, Sean Connery. Connery and the Monkey King. And joining us today, I'm so pleased today because we have the entire generation of, uh, of all three years of the, of the Masters program. From the inaugural class, we have Stephen French. From year two, we have Sarah Lynch. Graduate alumni Sarah Lynch. And joining us now are the current students on the Masters degree. We have Angie, Philip, Cami, and Jeremy. Well done. Welcome, everybody. And today we're going to talk really about the future of film music. Chris, how has it changed since you've been in the game and where is it heading for you at the moment? Uh, how has how is the, the, the scene in film scoring changed? Yeah. Well, I would say the single most important change, and again, I moved to Los Angeles in the 80s, is the development of the home studio, the synth. Yeah. Uh, Self-contained composer, performer, producer role. Uh, the person who can not only write, but provide a score essentially for free, you know, right. uh, that's changed. Again, when I started off, even when I was doing student movies at UCLA, if a student wanted original music, we had, he had to find some money or free pizza or something to get live musicians in. So the concept of live musicians has disappeared. You know, yeah. certainly in television, right. less so in movies. But um, again, when I moved to Los Angeles, there were sessions going on every day in every studio around the clock. It was hard to book time. Now studios are falling out of business one by one. You know, that's this, that's a big change. Uh, how electronics have influenced the way movies are scored is has changed the whole landscape. You know, yeah. that once upon a time when I came out there, you had to be classically trained. 
Now that's not part of the game plan. It can be, but it's not a prerequisite. You can come in as a rock and roll star and, and knock it out of the Paul Park, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's changed. I would say it's changed completely. Stefan, you've been out for two years now as a graduate. What are you seeing now uh, that the industry is asking of you as a young composer? Well, I think uh, like what Chris was saying about the influx of home studio means that there are so many people who can call themselves a film composer and churn out really well-produced music. But kind of touching on the whole classically trained model is like, where is the craft still in the profession if, you know, there's no way of quantifying someone's level of experience or skill they just put up this stuff and then oh i really like that it's yeah. epic you know yeah. big loud so i think using all the technology is great but if you use it as a tool then that's the important part if you just use it to blast impressive standing stuff there's not really any merit to what you're giving out so what do you think or just to touch on um, what Stefan said, to remind you of what got you into film scoring as well. Yeah. And that was probably a piece of music from, you know, from, from an old movie. And that it's, it's important, I think, to remember that. And the, while the orchestral sound is maybe not as fashionable anymore, I think it's still good to know about it and, you know, break the rules once you know something about them. The other thing about the studio is there's so much more to... I've, I've learned in the last year to being a composer, then it's not just about writing music. It's, you have to be so, uh, you need to have your tech chops up there as well. You need to be able to produce a mock-up overnight and, and it has to have, be of that high standard or else you won't be considered. So the competition is huge because people from all areas of music are, are as you said, coming into this film scoring right. world now. And you just have to set yourself, you have to find something unique about you Great. That will set you yeah. apart, maybe. I, th I think uniqueness and a passion <coughs> for what you do is very important. Yes. Jeremy, what are you thinking about um, DAW skills, you know, the technology world? What's it demanding of you now as a composer? I mean, certainly the skills have to be there. Um, something that, that Chris has been harping on this whole week is the, the skill of being a tunesmith. And and he said that word countless times, and it's really ringing a bell for me, especially. Yeah. You know, the technology skills, you've got to be there. You've got to be able to mock up overnight, especially when you're dealing with lower budget stuff. Maybe you don't have the luxury of recording an orchestra. Yep. Your mock-ups are going to be it. At the end of the day, though, the I, and I wonder, what, what is the answer to this question? Is the industry changing and, and tunes, as we've been talking, are going out the window? Or is it that the younger generation aren't as as solid of tunesmiths as the generation that has handed it off to us. You're asking me a question? Yeah. Yes, you were asking me a question. I would have to say uh, that uh, without a shadow of doubt, I, 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 would, I think we would agree that th the melodies that your generation is growing up with or grew up with probably I hope I'm, I'm not stepping over the line here. They're probably not as strong as the melodies that preceded them. Mm -hmm. And if their diet, if their musical diet includes melodies which are somewhat <clears throat> weak, it's not surprising when it come, comes time for them to step up to the plate and try to hit a home run that they're not going to get past first base when mm -hmm. it comes to melody writing. With other aspects, yeah, they beat, beat the old school in yards, you know. But in terms of tune writing, I would have to say that I agree that the, the reason why the generations that preceded my generation, the ones that preceded us, probably were better tunesmiths was because the diet that they, or the music that they consumed had better melodies. Angie, what do you think about that? Do you um, th tell me. Yeah, I kind of agree with them. Like, um, I feel like it's going to come around again. I mean, like, just like, you know, Back, like a couple of years ago, people were like, you know, a new thing, you know, skinny jeans in terms of fashion, like skinny jeans and stuff. But nowadays, you know, 80s fashion, 90s fashion, they're all coming around. And I mean, it's, there's obviously there's always going to be new things to try out. But if you don't know the history, where is your founding stone? You know, where do you stand on? Right, yeah. right. 
Philip, what do you think about the future? Are you excited about scoring for the future? Are you I am nervous? Excited. Uh, well, yeah, both excited and nervous because the thing is, uh, film, film music is uh, so much more accessible nowadays than it was because everybody with a couple of hundred dollars and a, and a, and a computer can kind of get into it uh, with, with minimal training, professional training, you know. Um, and so I think that's certainly ups the competition mm -hmm. uh, in the world. But at the same time, it's becoming more and more generic because the more people that, that use the same... Uh, uh, mass-produced. Mass-produced yeah. libraries or, or whatever. Yeah. And people who keep going to those sound libraries for inspiration are going to come up with the same results. Nine times out of ten, you know. And so being able to have an original idea going to the pencil and paper before you go to the sound library is going to uh, set you apart as a unique composer, I think. So. Cammy, do you, do you think there's a, there's a possible danger that producers and directors might ask emerging composers like yourself uh, that they want something like somebody else, like Hans Zimmer? Uh, they want that kind of sound, and they'll okay. give you a reference to something. Help think, us, who's Hans Zimmer? <laughs> new guy in town. <laughs> You got. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll check it out. I'll check them out when check I get back. Check it out on your MVD. Yeah, you'll yeah, find yeah. it. Okay. But do you, okay. Think, do you think that do you think that puts constraints? You saying, you know, can you make it like this, Mike Danny Elfman? Can you do me? Uh, well, do, you, do you think that? Yeah, I think uh, the <coughs> directors are more and more relying on temp and falling even more in love with temp scores, and I think it's getting more difficult uh, every day to break away or try to uh, uh, do something different from the temp. Uh, yeah, I think that there may be a danger, but I think there's also, uh, there may be, a, well, a good thing about temp is you know where the di director is going, you know, you have a, a certain idea, but uh, yeah, we have to be careful not to, uh, you know, sound uh, mass produced, as Philip says, like have this industrial generic sound homogenizing, yeah. like every all the output of film scores. Stefan, what, what do you, what's your relationship like with the director? Do you feel you have some liberty to move a new film forward with them when you, when you meet them? Um, it very much depends on the situation. I mean, there have been times where the temp was king and they felt right. like they had already mapped it all out and they knew what they were looking for. And you kind of have to gauge the situation when that happens. You know, is this an opportunity where you try to maybe move them in another direction, open up their mind to other possibilities. But that is what I think some of the responsibilities on us is to take the lead and maybe suggest yeah, alternatives, you know? Mm -hmm. But then of course, like Chris said, you know, if there's a job on the line and you just know that this person isn't gonna budge, yeah. don't shoot yourself in the foot and try and rock the boat, you know? And do you think we have a responsibility to our community or to, to the industry to, to be a bit more persistent in our style and or do you think we should sit back and uh, you know and accept what, what we've been offered? What would you like to think the future holds for you? I feel like um, even if you're trying to, I don't know, if you, even if you're asked to mimic the temp, I feel like there's still going to be a way where you can insert your own thing, whether it's for your own you know pleasure or, um, I don't know, for your style. I feel like there is still going to be a way, you know, maybe like, oh, is there a small pickle of, or no, probably not pickle but something, you know, disguise something that the director probably can't hear. Yeah. Or here and there. I mean, I, I feel like you can still pursue what you want, but maybe provide what director wants as well. I think uh, that's kind of, I remember Richard, when he was giving his class, you know, he had a really nice angle. It's like, if you do find a director who's attached to a temp, it was ask what it is about mm -hmm. the temp that they like. <clears throat> yes. Because it could just be some underlying subtle thing. Yeah. Whereas when we get handed the temp, it's like, oh, they like that All completely. <laughs> but then you find out, it's like, oh, do you hear that little part there? I really like the rhythm of that or something. Mm -hmm. But then you can completely do your own thing. But, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of where you're going with that. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is a way to do something original. Mm -hmm. yeah. Philip, what, what do you think the future holds for you as a composer? The future for me as a composer, hmm. a lot of coffee. Five Oscars. A lot of, a lot of coffee, a lot of sleepless nights. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, 
Are you engaged, excited about the future? Do you see potential and yeah, yeah, yeah. your creative so. path moving forward? Yeah, I think so, because, uh, you know, there, there's definitely not a shortage of visual media being produced these days, you know. And while there are more composers on the scene uh, trying to get in, into the business, there's not a shortage, you know. People everywhere are doing films, whether it be indie films or short films or animations or commercials, television, you know, wherever it is. Yeah. There's always a need for a score. You know, people wish their lives had scores or soundtracks. Yes. They walked around the streets. They wish they had Darth Vader's theme playing behind them. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. But uh, <laughs> so everything requires music, it seems, nowadays. Uh, and so I think uh, it's, it's, it's a bright future for composers in that area. That's exciting. That's, oh, that's yeah. Very, yeah, that's great. Jim, what, what, what are your thoughts about the future? It's, it's hard to say. You know, I think we all wish we could foresee the future and see what was coming next. Uh, I've always thought a lot about a certain quote that was initially said by Stephen Colbert that says, he said something like, say yes to any opportunity that is even remotely close to what you dream of doing. So it's like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing, but yes. and I think you were talking about someone today that said yes to everything, yes. even if it meant doing things Just for fly. free. Say yes. That was George yes. Delarue. That's yes. Okay. The French composer. It'll eventually, hopefully, land you in the right spot. Yeah. Can we? Any thoughts to where you, you see uh, what you can offer and what you can contribute to the global entertainment music industry? Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, just to chime in on what Jeremy was saying, I agree. Just uh, try to get yourself somehow in that uh, industry. You know, be a janitor in a film composer studio, mm -hmm. even. Uh, yeah, I think uh, it's exciting to see where it would go. If if I see maybe one good thing of of uh, people breaking away from the mold of uh, composers from the past is that you have more to draw on uh, in terms of just having more options of what is accepted uh, in the industry. And there's more uh, giants, if you will, to stand in the shoulders of. There's more uh, in the well, in the collective well of what's possible in the realm of film music that you can draw on. And I think that's exciting. More people, uh, even if it's not accepted or not correct, th there's more in the uh, collective well, if you will, of options that you can draw on to maybe uh, drive, the, uh, drive the field forward. Beautiful, great. So what, what are your thoughts? Are you excited about what you're going to be doing in the future? Um, Contributing to, to new films, to, to series, mm -hmm. to documentary, to, to visual media? Everything like that. I'm, I suppose when, we first, when I first joined uh, 14 months ago, was it? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hadn't composed much in my life before. So, and like now I've just finished um, the composition for a virtual reality game, which was the last thing I thought I'd be doing. But... It, 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 it was a brilliant experience because I'm composing, we're musicians, we're composers at the end of the day. The visual part of it isn't, I'm not so concerned about what it is as long as I'm getting to be creative. And it was a totally new um, project to be involved in. So, I mean, I'm completely open to any situation as long as I think that I will, it will be um, a good creative outlet. That's beautiful. Me. I mean, you're talking about contribution, you're talking about sharing and, and building, and I think that's great. Now, if you want to hear some fantastic pieces, uh, particularly with 110 piece orchestras. Check out our SoundCloud, Pulse College SoundCloud uh, albums, and you'll hear Stefan's class with his sales groups. And in less than five months, you're going to hear the new class with their 110 piece uh, recordings. They're amazing pieces, and I hope you enjoy them. Thanks very much to everyone today joining us from Sarah, to Jeremy, to Cami, to Philip, to Anne, and to Stefan, and of course, to Christopher Young. Thanks very much indeed. Bye bye. <laughs>